Hello and welcome back to the FreightWaves North American Tech Summit. I'm JP Hampstead, Director of Passport Research here at FreightWaves. And with me today is Ziad Ismail, the Chief Product Officer at Convoy. Ziad, welcome. JP, thank you for having me on the interview. Yeah, th thanks for thanks for being here. Uh, we've you know gotten to know each other uh, over the past few years as Convoy has you know developed so much um, really interesting technology in in digital freight brokerage and uh, reporting data back to shippers and automating various kinds of, of matching and, and pricing in, in, in the truckload marketplace. So it's it's really exciting to, to have you here. And, and thanks again. Um, one of the things that I am sort of intrigued by that's a, a kind of a recent development in the transportation and logistics industry, but one that I'm seeing more and more is the, the very role of chief product officer. What does it mean for a digital freight brokerage to think of its technology um, as a product? Uh, what does it mean for you know a company like Convoy to be to some extent a product driven business yeah it's uh it's really interesting it might be worth starting with what is a chief product officer like what do i actually do uh the chief product officer is a role that exists at almost every tech company it's less common in transportation and logistics but it exists at every tech company what you're responsible for is the cpo is setting the product vision, figuring out where you're going to invest your resources, which bets you're going to make for the long term, and then hiring and organizing the team to kind of execute against that plan. The way we think about it at Convoy is that we aren't thinking about ourselves as a brokerage that is trying to apply tech to become more efficient. The way we look at it is really from first principles, which is we look at the industry and then we say, given where technology is today and where it's going to be over the next couple of years, how, how should this industry be organized if this technology was available from the very start? How would things have been set up? And that often leads you to come to very different conclusions than the path that an industry has taken over a hundred years that then tries to optimize it with technology. The final step, of course, is you have to look at the thing you've come up with and then try to figure out, is it feasible? Can you actually transform the industry or what are the barriers to take it from the way it should be um, from, from where it is today? And so that's, that's a lot of the work we do and that's kind of the mindset we bring to problem solving. That's really interesting. So yeah, thinking from, from first principles, zero base in some way. Um, can you, Ziad, can you describe the product team at Convoy and sort of where you sit within the larger organization who you kind of work with a lot. Yeah, definitely. So the, the product and engineering team at Convoy, we're about 300 people. Uh, we're primarily based here in Seattle, uh, but we're starting to have people spread out uh, more broadly across the US. Of the 300 people, the thing that may be a little bit unusual is that we have 70 people in our science team uh, teams that are focused on machine learning, operations research, economists, et cetera. The reason for that is obviously that as you look at the truck trucking problem space, a lot of the problems, things like auction design, uh, relevance, matching, routing, are kind of classic science type problems. We've taken this team of 300 and we've split it up into what we call pods. There are 32 of these pods. Each pod is a cross-functional team. It will have a mix of product managers, engineers, scientists, designers, and each of these pods owns a specific mission. And we think of a mission as a long-term problem that we're going to be working on over many cycles, as opposed to saying, you own this particular part of our technology stack, or you own developing this solution. Or you own this feature or whatever. Exactly. And the reason for that is that we don't want the teams to fall in love with the specific solution they have right now. We want them to fall in love with the underlying problem they're trying to solve and continue to reinvent it. So an example of that would be, we have one pod called carrier experience. 
you know, as it sounds, what they think about is what are all the things that Convoy does that is not great from a carrier experience standpoint? What are things we can do better? And so we have lots of channels for collecting that feedback. There are weekly calls with carriers. Uh, we ask them to rate the experience after each job they do with us. From that, we learned that parts of the experience like detention are very frustrating. And so we invent automated detention. And we have a long list of things we're trying to go after, but it's, it's an evergreen problem. From a, from a reporting standpoint, the product and engineering team uh, reports into Dan Lewis, who's the CEO. So product and engineering on kind of the leadership team for the company. Got it. Great. Thanks. That's, that's, that's super interesting. Um, so from, you know, automated matching and auction design, like you said, to, you know, things like guaranteed primary, which involves, you know, very, uh, complex, you know, pricing algorithms and, uh, Convoy Go, which, um, Convoy recently launched as an on-demand uh, nationwide drop and hook service. Um, you've been a part of so many different uh, product launches. You, you, you and Convoy have shipped a lot of great technology. What, which product are you, at Convoy are you personally most proud of? Yeah, you know, in, in a given year, I think for 2020, we shipped about 200, what we think of as like important releases. Uh, we obviously, only kind of publicize some of those. Many of those are also under the hood. They're like improvements to machine learning models and things like that. I'd say there are a couple that really stand out to me that I, I really love as I think about my experience at Convoy. The first one is uh, the work we did around automating uh, matching loads to carriers. We announced in 2019, in January 2019, that we had hit a uh, milestone of 95% uh, of our matches were done automatically with no humans needing to reach out or call carriers to kind of find the truck that ultimately did the job. That was a really important milestone that we had worked on basically from when I joined Convoy in uh, kind of mid-2016, so it had been like three and a half years. And it was a really hard one. We had solved lots of problems to get there. And that one was important to me because I think the narrative that we were hearing in industry at that time was very much that, you know, people move freight, technology doesn't move freight. And, you know, we were seeing internally at Convoy when I was looking at our systems, what was happening to our matching, our carriers were behaving, that it's certainly true that people play an important part, but people were underestimating the role of technology in trucking and what was going to happen. And we saw it in our own data, just that it is completely different from how people are perceiving it is. Uh, and so that is one that we chose to share externally, uh, some of our automation metrics. And since then it's um, automated even further. Uh, we're now past 98% nationwide and, you know, approaching a hundred percent. So that, that one was super important. I think, you know, maybe helped a little bit to change the discourse in the industry. The other one that I'm really proud of is the work that we announced recently around flexible drop with Convoy Go. This is also one that was uh, really challenging, you know, three year project with a couple of milestones along the way. Yeah, with drop, with drop and hook. Um, and, you know, th this one was tricky because when you get into assets, when you get into actually leasing or owning assets, you take on a completely different risk, you know, not something that traditional brokers do and kind of breaking out of the traditional uh, brokerage role. But the way we saw it was that for our mission around zero waste, there's so much time wasted on, you know, hooking up trailers, uh, um, kind of loading, unloading. And the only way to really solve this problem was to get rid of the loading and unloading part and just strip it down to you know drive in, hook in and leave. And so we had to go after this problem space. And so we made this through a sequential number of bets with kind of increasing number of resources, increasing number of risk to convoy as we saw that we had solved some of the major problems. Uh, and, and so the announcement a couple of weeks ago was I think a culmination of just incredible work by uh, a couple of our teams within, within product and engineering. 
Great. Yeah. I, I, I was really uh, fascinated by that, that launch or that, that offering, um, just the way that you guys are thinking about, you know, asset utilization and, um, you know, the physical location of the trailers, repositioning them, um, the way that you're constructing like sort of different, different moves and different kinds of moves, um, uh, were, were really interesting to me. Um, and you know, definitely, uh, will be, you know, fascinated to hear about how that program evolves, how it grows, um, and the situations that, uh, shippers find it, you know, most, most useful and, and most necessary. And, um, Ziad, can you tell me a little bit about, you know, maybe, uh, taking a, a step back or thinking about the industry from a, a different perspective? Um, what's kind of the state of, t you know, call it uh, technology talent or engineers or um, software developers in the transportation and logistics industry today? Do you find that, um, you know, transportation logistics companies are sort of collectively building a pretty robust bench of technologists. Um, do you find that it's necessary to kind of bring in people from, you know, other industries? What, what, what's kind of the state of the field in, in, in terms of, you know, building large teams of people, where you find them, how you, how you train them? Yeah, I mean, I think of the industry at a really, really interesting stage right now. Uh, where, you know, the, the analogy I'd probably use is if you think about e-commerce, you know, difficult to pinpoint exactly when it started, but you could think about the, you know, founding of Amazon in 1994. So, you know, six years later, by the year 2000, people were starting to adopt it. People are starting to believe that there is going to be um, just a transformation of a lot of retail. Obviously, like a lot of ups and downs since then for e-commerce over you know the, the 20 years subsequently. But um, I think of the industry at a similar stage. So I think we're about five years into technology transformation. E-commerce is you know 27 years in. And there's there's a lot of work to do. I think for this industry to succeed uh, in the transformation, we have to pull talent that is thinking about technology broadly and not just people that have spent you know all their careers in logistics so when i think about the people we hire on the product and engineering side i would say less than one percent of the people are thinking about joining convoy or another transportation company like 99 percent of the people are thinking about should i join convoy or should i go to you know, another tech startup, or should I go to, you know, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, right? And, and so the, the question is going to be, I think one of the challenges for the traditional companies is going to be, can they tap into the, you know, top technical talent that's, you know, coming out of the top universities or have experience at the best technical companies? That I think is going to be critical. It's going to be critical for the kind of traditional players, and it's also going to be critical for co companies like Convoy that we continue to be able to tap into that uh, top talent. But the good thing is that I think that it's a giant industry and people are looking for impact. You know, my background prior to Convoy was working on ad optimization. It's a super fun math problem, but it's that meaningful. Like in trucking, I think we can connect our work to the environment and things that people care about in a deeper way than, you know, serving you, JP, slightly better ads when you open up your your phone. And so I, I think that's our opportunity, kind of giant industry with giant environmental impact. Right. Yeah, that that's exciting. And and I think I think the um the onus placed on transportation logistics companies, whether they're incumbents or startups, to figure out how to you know, compete with uh, the very largest and most attractive technology companies for talent is going to be really interesting. It has all of these implications for how they think about, you know, compensation, recruiting, um, uh, just the nature of work, whether their teams are, you know, how remote their teams can be, um, you know, all of that sort of thing. So I, I definitely appreciate those comments. Um, 
One final question for you, Ziad. Uh, can you talk about some technology trends in transportation logistics that you're most um, excited about um, over the next couple yeah, of years? Yeah, I think, I think there are a couple that are really exciting to me. I think the first one is probably just a macro observation on you know, how hard it has been for Convoy to go after some of the problems we want to go after. And that has to do with the fact that the real technical problems are hidden under layers of you know process and phone calls and emails and faxes and whiteboards. And you kind of have to get past that to actually be able to solve the technical problems. Um, if you just solve the technical problems, but you don't figure out how to solve that other layer, you're just, you're just a technology company that's never gonna get adopted. And so if you look at other industries like um, you know, telecommunications, you have companies like Twilio that have made it easy to access the telecom layer and kind of abstracted out all that complexity. Or in payments, you have Stripe and many others. I think in trucking, we need to reduce that complexity, that kind of layer of cruft and um, complexity that makes it difficult to apply technology to problems. And I think over the next couple of years, you're gonna see both kind of endpoints becoming more digital, like TMSs exposing APIs and things like that, as well as companies building out kind of middleware or abstraction layers that takes out that complexity. That's going to unlock, I think, massive amount of innovation. You know, both for Convoy, it's going to accelerate the work we do, but I think it's also going to accelerate the uh, ability for new technology entrants to come in here and innovate. So, so I think that's a really, really big one. I think it's critical if you want logistics not just to be a few players uh, thinking about technology, but you actually want it to be as vibrant as um, you know communications or payments or other things that exist. I'd say the second big one is I think the boundaries are going to blur much more between different parts of the industry, and you know there are benefits in having boundaries. There, there are benefits of thinking yourself as I'm a broker or I manage a warehouse or I build a TMS. Um, the benefit is that you can think about specialization and you can think about how do I get really good at doing this one task? The downside though, is that the handovers between these different parts tend to be really inefficient. Like you make a local decision in the warehouse to make the best possible decision, but you aren't considering what's going to happen downstream in terms of which trucks to source. And if, if you think about our mission around zero waste and where we need to go as an industry, those barriers need to disappear. So just, just the way kind of digitizing each role is happening, I think breaking down the barriers will be another big trend. And then finally, you know, I, I do think there is a reason that we've really gone after the kind of asset space with Convergo, because I think assets, um, owning your own trailers and getting into the drop and hook space pushes the efficient frontier right now you have this trade-off in the industry between, you know, if you want quality, then you should use drop and hook because it doesn't have loading times. Things become more predictable. You get higher quality of service. On the other hand, it's incredibly wasteful. You have all these trailers just sitting around unused. I think there's going to be a model that rapidly increases the, the quality in the industry, which means that we can remove buffers, we can remove waiting times, and we can just strip out a lot of the uh, wasted productivity for drivers today. And I think the merger of, um, I think assets are going to take a much, much larger part of the industry uh, than they do today. And autonomous vehicles, by the way, I think is one play within that kind of asset field. So th those are, I think, three of the big kind of macro shifts that I see in transportation and logistics. That's fascinating. So, um, if I remember correctly, sort of uh, middleware layers that abstract um, certain kinds of, you know, hitherto complex interfaces, uh, um, digitization that connects uh, decision makers and different sorts of, uh, you know, business units or companies to each other to think about second order effects of the, the kinds of things that they're, they're, they're doing. And then also um, just, uh, the, the sort of um, hybridization of uh, technology 
company, you know, tech first companies or technology companies with with, with assets um, and, and sort of. In, yeah, in a, in a yeah, I think that's right. I mean, there, there are many other things that are going to happen, so, but I think those are big sweeping changes that are going to unlock, um, I think, a lot of new innovation and much better experiences, both on the shipper side and for carriers. Well, Zia, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it was it was a pleasure as always, and um, you know I hope you're well up there in Seattle.